All right. Let's do this. There's Huey. Okay. We're one man down. Yeah, no Ricardos, so it's us three. Huey, hey, yeah. you've got a uh, job for us. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, what's on the cards? Well, you're being the smallest. Oh, here we and go. The most agile. Again. Okay. You're going I'm down the, the drill hole. Okay. Right? And you're going to have a look at the band. We're about halfway down. Have a look at that. When there you say go. have a look, do you mean? Yeah. Do you mean dig it? You're going to have to dig down there with a jackhammer. You got this? I'll just, I'll go for it. It'll be fine. Let's get it done. Make sure you sit properly in it. I'll get down there. Yeah, yeah. all right. You get down there. Yep, yep. Just tight. Everything's right. Okay. okay. You've got to wait till he's clear. About halfway down, there's a nut band which we haven't opened up, we haven't tried. It can be an indication of opal. Ready to go? I Down believe so, hole. hopefully. OK. All, All right. right, there we go. Okay. Don't get caught in the hose. Yeah. We're looking for something different, we're looking for something nice, and we're, you know, taking the chance on this level up there. If there's any speck of colour, silica, anything in it, it'll be worth uh, exploring a bit further into the wall. <laughs> Pretty dusty and dingy down here. I mean, I like the feeling of being underground. It's quite peaceful. But then when I've got my sister hanging from a rope, uh, gets you on your on your game. You know what I mean? You gotta you gotta be onto it. What? What? Wait! 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 You right? Hang on, I lost my helmet. What do you mean? It's okay. You gotta have your helmet on. Yeah. Down to level. Is it definite? Change in the soil here, Zach. Okay, I'll let you concentrate on it. Yeah, it's quite amazing, actually. So the theory is that the nuts come down the slip and they meet in one section. Hey, Sophia, just check your ropes aren't twisted. They're twisted down here. To be honest, it's all pretty, pretty dodgy. It's as as safe as it is. Alrighty. It's now or never. All right, get into it. Okay, guys, watch your heads. You've got to try and stabilise yourself. Try and smash above the level and also not smash the opal in the process. There's quite a few things going on here. Uh, just down a bit more, mate. <laughs> Yui! Whoa! Uh, something's not right, mate. Sophia, what's going on? I've lost my seat. You all right? You're OK. Yeah, mate, I'm all right. Bit of a shock. You sure? Uh, I lost my seat. Um, yeah, you haven't lost it. It's it's underneath you, but uh, you couldn't get back on it. What happened, Yui? I don't know. You must have got caught up somehow with the seat catching on the side of the wall. I don't know. I haven't figured it out. It's never happened before. Right. Just settle down for a few seconds and and make sure that that nothing is caught. The seat's not caught. Yeah. The the harness is not caught anywhere. I'm okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Hey, you guys, watch your head. I'm about to move some serious earth. All right, I'll step back here. I can see now that the earth sediment is changing colour. That's a really good sign. All right, concentrate. All right, I can definitely see a little nut formation in there as well. Found that band, have you? Found that nut that I... Oh, I found something. Just hang on, man. I've... Yep, yep, here we go. That's one for sure. Found a yellow knight. Oh. Nice little baby. There's a little pocket here. Oh, this one's good. <laughs> oh, nice. There's got to be something in there. They're stubborn little buggers. actually have something here. Just want to see if that's colour there. Just watch out for the water. Colour. That's good. Definitely colour. Isaac, you have found some colour, mate. Wow. Yeah. That, that's perfect. Blue or purple. Right. Beautiful. Wow. That's a good sign. That's yeah. a good sign. Yeah, I knew there was something there. Yeah. Do you think you could get a few grand out of that? Whatever nature's holding in this stone, I'll make it shine. 
I'm going to do something a little bit risky and I'm going to cut straight through that pattern and colour down to that red layer because that's basically the start of a crystal centre. Please, God, don't put any holes in this stone. This is unreal. I've never seen it. I've never seen a crystal centre exposed like this. But I'm cutting the stone the way it wants to be done and I'm going to expose it for what it's worth. We're pretty much... I can't believe what I'm seeing. I'm, I'm actually... I'm, I mean, I'm never lost for words, mate, but... <laughs> oh, my God. Sophia, have a look at this. Put your hand out. I just saw the green. Oh, my careful, God. Careful, careful. Oh, my God, he's right. See the back of it? That, that was what we were looking at there. Oh, my God, Isaac. There's three rolling flashes all at different angles and it's a full-on star, Sophia. Absolutely stunning. Sophia and Isaac's opal features multiple bands of intersecting colour and when viewed at a certain angle, they form a unique six-pointed star pattern. The opal's cut and rubbed and weighs one gram. It's so beautiful. It's not only a full face of colour, but it's skin to skin all the way around on a 360-degree, like, Easter egg. It's mad. We've named it the Supernova. It's mad. That is the maddest stone I've ever seen. Well, let's get ready for... Let's get ready for Anton, hey? How the hell are you even going to value that? Travelling from Melbourne, more than 1,000 kilometres away, Anton Engelmeyer is an opal buyer and art collector who's bought Isaac's opal artwork in the past. I'm only going to make... I'm not a haggler. No, I mean... I'll make you one no, offer and that's that. done. <laughs> okay. I'll only pay 15000 that's it. If I have to pay more than that, I've got to go home to the wife and I ain't going to do that. We really appreciate your offer. Um, what do you think about 15000 Hang on, sorry, there's a condition. Only if it goes into the artwork. What are you leaving? I'll pressure for you. I'm leaving on Wednesday. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I can do it by then. Okay. I know exactly what to do with it. You've Anton, got to promise Anton, me you'll Anton, do 100% Anton, <laughs> Anton, you've got a deal, mate. And if you break it, you own it. It's such a conundrum. And we'll go fix up Sophia now. I'll take yeah. care of payment, eh? Hey? No worries. Right, I'll, I'll I'm going to get into it. You better. I'll yeah. enjoy that. All right, Thank good you. luck. Okay. Right, let's go and do okay, a deal. Well, congratulations. Yeah, that was crazy. I don't remember Anton being quite so excitable. He rolled in like a cyclone, but... At the end of the day, we made a sale, $15,000. We've got to take all this roof out and prop it up. We're going to get it all safe and drop out this overhanging dirt, and then we're going to work around it and square up on the pillar and go through. Dad actually hand-built that digger himself. The hydraulic digger runs off the power pack. And then we've got um, a bogger as well. It's got a bucket on the front, scoops the dirt up. Good little operation, um, often works pretty well. Lucky we got the remote bogger. We don't have to get out under there, we can just pull it out with the digger and then stand back and bog it out. So it's electric over hydraulic. Basically, it'll load the bucket. Uh, once the bucket's full, bring it back, fill the, the hoist bucket, and yeah, you move about 600 kilo at a time, so it saves a lot of shoveling. So he does a bit and then I bog it out, I say that. Neither of us actually get into a dangerous position at all. Might be in a bit of trouble here, bro. You bogged it, didn't you? He's bogged the bogger. Just that floor's that choppy. How, how are you thinking of getting out? We can't obviously get in there and free up the wheels um, with the shovels or anything, because. I certainly won't be getting in under that lid. Yeah, what do you reckon? Well, so long as we're not getting under that hanging dirt there, that's what we're trying to avoid. The Chiels have got their bogger stuck under a dangerous overhang, attempting to make old workings safe so they can continue mining an opal-rich pillar. You know, it doesn't take much of that to come down and, you know, break your neck or do a bit of damage, so... I'll just hook the chain on and I'll bring the digger in and we'll just drag it out with the digger. That dirt there, that's just hanging up there, you know. Could drop out any time, so we just don't go in there. And so we just hook onto the back and just pull it out. Righto. Now, um, you just keep an eye on that cord there. Yeah. Righto. You 
right? Yeah, I'm right. Here we go. All right, fire it up, maybe. And... Good to go? Yeah, that's him. All right, just jump out of there, please, and I'll um, strip that oval dirty out. Taking out that all that hanging dirt, and um, we've got a flat roof there now, so we can just prop to that. The danger element there is gone now, and um, we'll chuck five or six props in. And once we do that, then we can just move forward, taking that pillar, just propping as we go. The mine props are tree trunks, up to 30 centimetres thick, capable of supporting a massive 60 tonnes before bending or cracking. Chris has had to source and cut massive four-metre cypress pines from the local scrub, which they need to manoeuvre down the 11-metre shaft. They're just massive. I've never cut props that long in my life. Oscar! Yep! Are you right? Yep! Righto! Yeah, it'd be very tight. You know, they don't bend. I just hope they can fit in, to be honest. 200 kilo props. I don't like our chances here. What's he doing? Keep it coming. Down. Down. You're all right. Job done. At least that's the first stage done. Got a buddy. Lug him over to the ballroom now and put him in. Right up. What are we thinking? Well, we'll get two in close to that edge. Yeah. Two caps coming your ways. Well, the caps just um, give it a bit of a surface area, top and bottom. Right. Spread the load a little bit there, hardwood. Pretty good, mate, I think. Anyway, that's one. And that was the easiest one. Bit of a warm up. <laughs> what are you done? What? Come here. You got a jam, have we, or what? Green knobby up here. That's a good sign, good start. We had a gut feeling there might have been a bit of opal up the top. That's not bad, mate. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> That's what we want. Yeah. Nobby opal, slang for nodule and unique to Lightning Ridge, are small pebbles of opal formed in claystone. A really, really good sign to be getting nobbies up there, let alone have colour in them. And we've only got about a foot face here, so... Who knows, you know, what else is to come as we get further in. Red on black is the most dollars, but uh, they're pretty rare to get red on black. You don't need a lot of it to make all right money, but um, at the end of the day, Mother Nature gives you what she gives you. You know, it's taken 100 million years to form, and, and um, it's up to blokes like us to come along and, and dig it out. Yeah, it's the last bit of dirt to come out. Now, last chance I open for this week. It's going to take up what we got on board. We'll take it and put it in the Aggie, and then we'll just have a wash up and see how we go. Yeah, so we got the Aggie. It's our um, wash plant. It's a recycled cement mixer. A conveyor belt powered by a small diesel engine is feeding the opal-bearing dirt into the repurposed cement mixer, where it's being washed by roughly 1,000 litres of water. Yeah, we'll let it run for a couple of days, wash it down, and yeah, hopefully there's some, some nice gems that roll out of it. Getting the last of it. Chris! Oh, a bit of build up underneath the belt. It's acting like a break. We'll just clear it out, get it going, and try and get the rest of this dirt in. Back up under there now, I reckon. Give that a shot, eh? If we can't actually wash the dirt and process it, then, you know, we don't get paid at the end of the day. Oscar. Yo. Go back from the cutter. Yo, you had a look yet? No, I haven't. Oh, you waited for me, did you? I did. Jeez. It's nice, eh? Hey? Look at the Chinese oh, right in that little red one. Good. 
the Chiels have black opal, featuring rare Chinese writing pattern in red. The parcel is rubbed and weighs six grams. Chinese writing, you don't often see that pattern. It's really rare. Uh, that stone, it's, it's, it's only about one after two carats, but it's a beautiful little stone. This might just be our year, you know. Well, I hope so, mate. It's, it's already starting to shape up like that, isn't it? For sure. What do you reckon? I reckon. I reckon you're looking at about... 27 and a half. That's yeah. making good to me. <laughs> Bloody hard. That's a lot. The pillar that we're working on at the moment, it's the last bit of ground that we can dig in this claim. So once we take this, we're going to have to move somewhere else. We've got a lot riding on it. Someone in Sydney or overseas sees a, sees a stone, you know, and they think it's beautiful. They don't know what goes into it. There's a lot of hard yards goes into finding able. Here. Big green knobby hanging out the face. Yeah, I can see it. Another one there, another one above. Another one there. <laughs> well, we've been digging here four years. That's the best to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, how about we get this cleaned up? I want to keep going now. I want to get this in the edgy. It's exciting. <laughs> oh, Just blew a hose. Always away. We're going to get Opal, boys. Shut her off, yeah, boys. Yeah, I'll turn it off. Oh, you didn't miss. Got Opal in the face, Opal in here, and we busted those. After a disastrous last season. That's it, eh? There wouldn't even be $20 in that. The Chiels need to turn their fortunes around. But record-breaking floods already bogged the truck, you know, we haven't even dug, dug anything yet. And machinery breakdowns are plaguing their operation again. If we can't actually wash the dirt and process it, then, you know, we don't get paid at the end of the day. In desperate need of stock for their opal business, the Chiels are gambling on a high-risk dig into an opal-rich super pillar supporting the entire mine. All the weight's on it, so if we don't do the job right and we don't prop it right, it could kill us. Simple as that. The ground is shifting and, you know, it's going to come down eventually, but it's the best prospect we've had in the four years we've been mining here and I'm just keen to see what's in it. What a pain in the ass. You know what? It could be worse. There could be no trace there at all. <laughs> and the bastard hose. We won't be able to fix that out here, eh? No, that's a town job. I'm just, yeah, going to stay here, keep an eye on things. Could potentially have thousands of dollars in the wall at the moment. Right, mate. We've got Opal in the face down there. We've got to bust the hose, so we want to get it fixed and get back into it. No time to waste. Most people are pretty good and, and won't go down other people's mind, but we're just going to keep our eye on it. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, y
not clean. No. That's not a good sign. The Chiels have discovered that their potentially opal-bearing nobbies are empty. She might not be as good as we think. Well, you know what? At the end of the day, we get what we're given. Yeah. After 24 hours washing the opal dirt in the agitator, the Chiels are about to find out if four years of back-breaking work has paid off. Drag the tail out, so we'll find out the last moment of truth. Push it down. Is there anything coming down? Hey, I didn't see a whole lot. That's a fair nobby. That's a big one. That's a big crystal. Yeah, wow. Real good start. Already the first shoot, just a fair bit of money, you know. And I'm excited for these next two shoots. Oh, boys. You got him? Yeah, look at this. Red bar. Red? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That could be 20 grand stone, bro, just in that. Yeah. He's yeah. bought the colour. <laughs> Best truckload of dirt we've dug in four years. What are you reckon? I'm pretty keen to go have a look at it. Stupid out. Bloody good. Go all that we got. The Chiels have crystal opal bursting with a full rainbow of colour. There are 120 stones in the rough, weighing 600 grams. These are all going to cut, kids. You're looking at about eight carat stone at least there. Possibly $10,000 stone there. Bloody oath. Mm -hmm. That red one there, he, he could face 25, 30,000 just in there. Bloody oath. That's a lot of material That's for one truck. You know what I reckon? What are you thinking? There's got to be 200 grand there. Cheers! <laughs> <laughs> well done, mate. So stoked for you, Dan. You've earned this. I'm stoked for you, Dan, because guess what? We're all getting a share of it. <laughs> Came at the right time, Paul. 100% <laughs> a dream come true for Dad. You know, he's been working really hard his whole life. I haven't seen anything like that in my whole life. Dad's ecstatic, like, exactly what we wanted. Bringing Luca out, it's just awesome to have her in the team, and I'm pretty sure she'll want to hang around there. 200 grand on the table, I can't believe it, if I'm honest. It's a crazy feeling. We've all just been riding that adrenaline. We've had to revise our season target, and that's a good problem to have. Josiah and Lisa have invested all their savings in a huge 10,000 square metre claim, working a small pocket in the centre. All our assets have pretty much been sold to fund this venture. If we don't find Opal, it'll all be for nothing. We're not together, we're just good friends. But we've both invested the same amount of money and we're equal partners. We live day to day, so um, there is a lot of pressure on, you know, putting food on the table. Our season target this year is 60,000 Australian dollars. Nothing could go wrong. <laughs> oh, yeah, we've got a bit of water down here. Yeah, a lot more than what I expected. It's going to be a bit of a pain to get all this water out. So we're just putting the, the clay down on the ground so that um, the water soaks into the clay. So we just dig a little bit and then we clean out, bog out, and then uh, dig a bit more. So it's climbing out now and it's quite dangerous because block can just fall down, it's, it's metal, it's, it's, it can, it's very dangerous. My life's on the line here. Shouldn't have to take these risks. seems to be working. 
working again. Let's keep on working. This mine is actually quite dangerous at the moment because we've only got one entry and exit point, and uh, we're currently tunneling to a second shaft. We'll have a, a back door, if you will. The claim's two shafts are six metres apart. Josiah and Lisa have spent the last month trying to connect them with a tunnel. We've got lots of colour happening up here. Trace. Our priority is connecting the shafts. So then we have an emergency exit. So we've, um, we've prioritised that over digging out the colour. We measured it here and we are at almost six metres, so we must be, must be almost there. The other hole should be straight, like just in front of this ladder. So like the thing is what we did, we just stand here at the ladder and we just like, oh shit, we actually are quite, we are no. quite a bit to the right. Yeah, so I was saying, go back to, to the left. To the left. we go further to the right. No, we need to go to the left. If you're here straight, we're digging to the right and we need to go to the left. No, I think we need to dig further to the right. To the left. Because if you stand here straight, the whole that what we're digging is going to the right and we have to go straight. So we need to dig more to the left. Because the hole is directly in line with this ladder. Yeah, which is there, not there. No, it's there. All right, well, let's see. We just want to make it today, like, we feel like we're going to smash this last little bit and just crack through. There's our second drill hole, and we've got fresh air pouring in through. The most important part is now that we can just climb over to the second shaft. So it's way safer now. Oh my god. My we god. did it, Lisa. We did it. Watch the hole. Watch the hole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we've got a section of wood here, opalized wood. Millions of years ago, must have been like some sort of tree roots or something. And then it slowly eroded away and the opals come in and, and um, occupied that space. Opal forms when silica-rich water fills cracks and voids caused by faults or decomposing matter. The water slowly hardens and over millions of years creates opal. Whoa, there it is. Oh, wow. This is an amazing piece. This is a piece of opalized wood in three pieces. We'll put it in the bucket, bring it with us upstairs, and we'll reassess the value of everything we found today. Lisa and I put everything to this. Practically, my bank account zero. Lisa's bank account zero. We're not earning any income. The income that we get is what we find and what we sell. So we got a buyer coming. She's a friend of Lisa's. She's from Spain. Apparently, she wants to uh, start selling opal over in Spain. <laughs> Seven grand would be would be would be nice. Hello, Josiah. Hey, how you doing? Welcome. How are you? Yeah, good. People are looking for opal in in Europe. I'm keen to buy, uh, but let's see. Let's see what they offer me. Yeah. So we found this piece. Unfortunately, it's it broke. Yeah, what about these pieces? Uh, they belong as well to the same... Yeah, so it's all from the same section. Josiah and Lisa have opalized wood fossil. 
It's predominantly blue-green and in the rough. How much uh, do you want for that? 7,000. Yeah, it's beautiful, but it's, it's three pieces. Uh, it's not two, just one, you know, like, I'm not going to pay seven grand. No, it's sure. So five grand is my offer. So think about it. Yeah, five is a little bit too low for us. Like we're like we're both starting in this, and we we you know we do really need the money. So I think we'll we'll go with six and a half. No more than six, guys. It's my no. It's my last offer. What do you think? Six. Six thousand done. <laughs> okay, thank you, Six thank thousand, you, Saya. Yeah. First start for the season. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to use this money just to, to buy the basic, basic necessities to give us, because uh, we've got nothing in the bank. So, uh, yeah, super happy. Yo, John. Oh. I'm working on one dump that I don't think's been touched. Do you want to let me know if it's any good? Yeah, OK, OK. In Australia's Opal capital, Cuba PD, the Blacklighters, Mark Ianson, John Nasser, and Paul Kuhn are using their 10 ton Blacklight noodling machine, Opal Zilla, to search mine dumps for Opal mist by old timers. When we're noodling, you're just, just hoping you've got something that's missed. Yeah, you gotta do it, mate. Make some money, buy some diesel, pay some bills. The demand for Opal's there. So we thought, let's push a bit harder. To do that, we needed a couple more people. We got Xavier here, working full time. We got his mate up on school holidays. He's giving us a hand as well, Cooper. I'm about to go in the dark room with Xavier and John. Um, I've never been in there before, so I don't know, a bit nervous, because people say you can feel sick and stuff. What you're looking for is a nice little glow on the belt. Hey, there we go, Coops. That's what she looks like. Black light, what we call it, is it just fluoresces the opal on the belt. You just watch your hands. Sometimes you can get scorpions coming through, and they glow the same colour as the opal. Hey, so I'm feeling a little bit like woozy a little still. If you feel like you're going to be sick, go. Oh, what the? Oh, man. Coop, out. Get out, get out, get out, get out. Get out, mate. Get out, dude. Oh, it's on my hand, man. You're a grotty, grotty man, Cooper. Last year, the Blacklighters and their families finished with a bang. Last season went quite well, like we made target. They found over $300,000 worth of opal. Whoa, it's a bit dodgy. Using their profits to explore abandoned underground mines. Oh, have a look at that. Hey, I'm okay. Same in the world. We got colour. We want to get to the main tunnels where the old timers were. We're digging a massive open cut. It's huge. It's the biggest operation the Blacklighters have ever taken on. The Blacklighters must dig their 100 metre long open cut to a depth of 12 metres to reach the tunnels. We want to open them up, take the pillars, take the roofs, take the floors, and really empty it out properly. Noodling in Opalzilla, it'll pay the bills. It won't get you rich in the end. The open cut's where it's at to find the, you know, the big pocket. To get rich, it's pretty much the only way. They've sunk $20,000 into excavating the new mine. When you're doing an open cut, there's a lot of downtime where all of you're doing is digging dirt. It's, it's worthless. From ground level to about 40 feet, you're just getting nothing, just paying diesel. Weeks away from hitting pay dirt, they still need cash to cover costs. My family relies on us finding opal out here. This year, we're going to have to basically provide for everyone's family. We've got, like, three families to feed. The three families all share Mark's underground house in Coober Pedy during the mining season. 
both Mark and I and, and the others, we've all come from harder times. Family is the essence of our business. Mark's wife, Rachel, is in charge of the Blacklighters' finances and runs online auctions with the Opal found. This year, our target, we needed a bit higher, so we're heading for 350. Opal stocks are getting quite low at the moment. The boys are out there working really hard with the loader trying to get down to the level, but I don't know if it's going to work quick enough. If we don't find Opal, there's no auctions, there's no team. We have to keep finding Opal, we just do. The job we want to do is too big for the loader to take the dirt out of that cup. In Cuba PD, the Blacklighters are unable to dig their open cut and run Opal Zilla at the same time. Without Opal to sell, their upcoming Opal auctions are at risk. We're running out of Opal. To move things along a lot faster, we're going to need a truck. Oh, wrong gear. They've gambled $10,000 on a second-hand dump truck. This is the truck that we've found in town that suits us the most. We can fill the truck up straight out the excavator, off, back again, back again. Before you know it, we'll be down. Truck, you beauty. Made it. She was a bit rough, but she's a right. Your new truck, mate. You're going to be driving this. We need you to drive it. We need a truck driver. Paul's on the excavator. I'm on the loader. Johnny's in the dark room. Someone else needs to drive the truck, so it's got to be Xavier at this stage. At the Black Lighters' home in Cooper PD, the team wash the opal, then grade it in preparation for the auction. We've got a pretty good customer base. Over 35,000 people follow us from all around the world, Bulgaria to the United States, UK. It's done me here for the live. Get ready. Give me shake the dust out of my beard. I'm pretty dusty today. This is our only income for the family, and not just for the family, to be able to continue mining. The Blacklighters have a large parcel of crystal opal. The colour varies from small flashes of blue and green to a vibrant full spectrum featuring rare red. Mark and Rachel have split the find into hundreds of small parcels and three large king stones. We're live, guys. All right, now I'm going to start with some parcels tonight. Bit of small stuff. I'm going to reward someone that has a bid real quickly. Ben's at 30. Sold. There you go, Ben. Get rewarded for having a go, mate. I've got another nice parcel. I reckon there's 50, 60 carrots in this parcel. Ben's at 30. Brendan's at 40. Casey's at 30. Zags is at 85. Well done, Zags. That's yours. Auctions are going really well. Everyone seems to be quite happy with the materials. Pedro's at 180. Sold. Dee Dee's at 450. Sold. Aaron's at 150. That's yours. Dee Dee's at 4,000. 150. Sold. 4150. I reckon I'm going to go to Stone of the Night, guys. Now, it is absolutely sensational. With Pedro at 66. Congratulations, Pedro. That one's yours. Thanks, everyone, for joining in. We've had an absolute blast, as usual. See ya. Bye. Right, I think well, Ray's after, better do the maths. After What's... doing a few sums, we're up around the $46,000, oh which God. is just yes. high five to that. Oh, yes. That's one of our best lives ever. Well that's a win for us. That's going to get us a fair bit of diesel. So, perfect start to the season. We haven't been out to the claim since we did that dig and we've had a lot of rain. So do you think the um, all the roads at the claim will be all right? Mate, I, I don't know to tell you the truth. We have another big rain event in Queensland, that lake will fill and, and if the bottom road closes, then that's it. That's the season done. That's a lot of water. Look the water back up here. Oh, boys. Ah, oh, look at oh. this. Jesus. Ah, uh, it's the end of that. Look at it coming in. That's a big body of water. You can forget about using that road, that's for sure. So we've got three roads that we use to get out to the Lemonade Claim, and uh, we've already got two of those three roads out of, out of action because they're underwater. There's been a few big rain events in Queensland which come down and 
end up at the Cookeran Lake, which, you know, we drive across to get to our mine. If the lake keeps filling, there's a chance that the third road can get covered in water as well, and then that's us done and dusted for the year. <laughs> Jeez. Last week, Chris and Oscar Cheel dug into the heart of an opal-rich pillar and produced a $27,500 haul. That's bloody good to me. <laughs> You know, our target's 200000 for this year. If you think of the dismal year that we had last year, trying to make up for that, running costs, you know, that's really not a whole lot when you split it between us. We had 20 claims last year. We've dropped back to 10, but we've got a pillar on the ground that we want to take. Now Rory is joining brother Oscar and dad Chris for the first time this season. He'll provide extra manpower to continue their high stakes dig, removing the huge dirt pillar holding up the roof of the mine. Dad and I are happy to have Rory back. Now, that's not sustainable with two blokes. While I've been away, the boys have found a couple of nice pockets of opal leading into this pillar, so the pillar is definitely the best chance we've had finding opal in a while. Uh, well, we're going to have to get this truck down to mine, but it's a bit wet. To start work, the Cheels need to get their 20-tonne dump truck and heavy machinery across the only remaining open road to their mine. So at the moment, we're just preparing to um, prop for the pillar. We've put a pretty big hole in here over the last few years, um, and there's a fair bit of weight displacement, so before we go any further, we need to prop the roof up so that when we take more weight, it's got something to come back onto and it doesn't come back on top of us. To avoid catastrophic mine collapse, the Chiels will need to prop the ceiling with cypress pine logs. I think it's roughly about 60 tonne per prop holds up. Um, so they're fairly solid. Obviously, taking pillars, you've got to put the props in because that's, that's what's holding the ground up. So without these things, it'll come in and come in on top of us and None of us want that. Yeah, so at the moment, this is the only bit of proven ground we have left. Um, we've got a lot of area to dig, but it's all just a guessing game at this point. So Dad will be digging by himself down here. Oscar and I will be upstairs, um, up the top, on the drill rig to find our next spot to dig. Righto, boys, you might as well go up and get on that rig, eh? Yeah. Right, sounds like a plan. Just um, be safe down here, give us a yell. You'll um, be right down here by yourself, you'll old okay? Pop? Oh, I'll be a little bit lonely. A bit lonely. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, boys. Where we've got the drill rig set up at the moment, we're probably about 100, 150 metres from our mine hole. So the idea of that is it's all virgin country out here. So if we can locate some trace out here and potential, you know, opal, uh, when we're finished the pillar, we can move all the gear over to this spot and start mining here. But definitely not an easy task. There's a long way between, you know, us and that. It could happen first hole, it could happen on the thousand hole. Opal, including minute amounts known as trace, is formed when silica-rich water fills cracks and voids in the earth and hardens over millions of years. My dad's underground by himself, so although you know, Rory and I have got our attention on the drill, we're keeping tabs on how he's tracking as well, making sure the buckets are coming up, making sure the gear's running, because you know, if he runs into trouble down there, he's by himself. We're up here, we can't really hear or see what's going on. Look at that. Wow, it's sort of like to see, to dig it right down through it. We've got green and nice blue. The boys will be happy about that. It's a good day. Here we go. The Chiels are at their wash plant, a converted cement mixer that uses over 800 litres of water to remove clay from excavated rock and expose opal. Yeah, we're running out of light. They're washing dirt Chris dug from the last pillar holding up their entire mine roof. The sun's acting pretty low, so, yeah, yeah, you don't want to be tailing out in the dark. We need light to be able to spot the opal, otherwise we miss stuff, but... 
on the same trend. We can't go too fast to do this stuff as well. We're trying to do it quick enough that we don't cut ourselves going too late. If we if we just stick with it and do what we need to do, we should get through the tail out. Oh, please. That's clean. It's got a red orange on that side. Oh, look at the colour bar in that. Right, that's jam. <laughs> that's him, boy. Look at that one. Oh, yes. That's triple barred, you know. Oh, look at that. Nice, beautiful little orange crystal. I can't get over it. Beautiful. Look at that. Clean as a whistle, Christopher. We're getting paid, boys. We've had a great week. We've had a real good week. <laughs> 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 Can't have a look in the light, eh? Nice blue-green parcel, isn't it? Mm. Hey, there's a big pile of definites. Oh, you can see straight away that most of them are going to cut. The chiels have small nodules of opal known as nobbies, featuring blue-green with flecks of rare red. In the rough, there's 90 grams. Boys, you look at these, like, they're all going to be... You know, thousand dollars, thousand dollar stones, easy. You know, some are, some are two, some are three thousand. Look at that. You know, it's clean bar right around. Yeah. It's probably a three thousand dollar stone there. You add that up, you're looking at forty grand. Good stuff, boys. Forty k. Oh, that's stuff, it. mate. Forty thousand dollars in the tail out. Feel bloody amazing. Huge figure. Considering we didn't get anywhere near the amount of dirt that we wanted to, 40 grand, yeah, is unbelievable. Thanks for all the hard work, boys. That's it, boys. That's good. <laughs> we'll make a good little team, eh? Yeah. It's just unreal to be to be working with them, you know? Like, I'm, I'm pretty lucky. Hey, Paul, have a look at this. Load is stuffed again by the looks of it. When it got repaired, there was bolts up there. But now, all of a sudden, completely gone. And here's the metal from them here. All these shavings, they've come from the bolt heads. It's collapsed on itself. Just going to wear through and wreck the whole thing. Hey, Brett, it's Mark. I got a bit of trouble with the loader. The bolts have all sheared off that Corey put in there. I don't know what's going on. I've only done not even two, three hours with it. So could you give us a call? I can't use it, eh? All right, mate, thanks. We come out this morning, start of week two, and we've got a $10,000 problem here. Spent all that money on it. Yeah, we're in a bit of strife. Yeah, I hope Zilla can't run because I can't feed her, you know? I need the loader to feed her the dirt, and it just means no money. No money coming in this week. Zero. Last season went quite well, like we made target. But the start of this season has been a disaster. Davia! You like cut corners in an angle. You will, you went back and did it on an angle. I watched you do it. With Mark's stepson Xavier. You have to bring your A game. Yeah. And friend Cooper. <laughs> oh, man. Struggling to handle the pressure. Keep out. Get out, get out, get out. On top of that, the team has already spent seven and a half thousand dollars in diesel, attempting to reach an opal level 12 metres down. Diesel's not cheap at the moment. It's like over two bucks a litre, so sucked a fair few bucks getting down to where we are. It's basically a money pit at the moment. We've set the target of 350,000 this year. Might sound like a lot, but when you split it up between all of us, it's not that much. Well, we've got three families here on board. There's a lot of expenses to cover there. If we don't find Opal, things shut down. The game's over. It's um, finished. The dream's gone. She's stuffed, so Opalzilla's not going to be working for. Who knows long, you know, it could be a month, could be a couple of weeks, so. The loader is vital to move opal bearing dirt from the open cut and to feed Opalzilla, the Blacklighter's noodling machine, which exposes opal under blacklight. Opalzilla pays the bills at the end of the week, you know, gives us diesel, puts a bit of food on the table. So, seems Opalzilla's not running with the loader. I think the excavator's the only way we can make some money this week. It's a little bit slow, but hey, eh, I'm hoping we're going to find something. We're just going to get in there and move some dirt. Right, hey, Davey, let's get to work. Me and Paul are just going to keep going all day and try our hardest to get as much dirt out as we can. So it's time to bring the pick out now. We've got to start chunking away at the rocks ourselves. Yeah, it's going to be a tough week. It's going to be a real tough week. I 
I don't know what we're going to do here. We just spent 10000 on repairs, and it looks like it was a waste of money. Can't use it, or we're going to go through another pin, another bearing, wreck the housing. She's stuffed. With the vital loader out of action, the Blacklighters are using their 20-tonne excavator to clear dirt to get to an opal level. But it's slowing their operation down to a crawl. 40 foot from the surface there, there's a network of tunnels all over the place. Back in the 70s, they used to all mine underground. Now, we're going down to see if they've left anything. It is going to cost a lot. If it succeeds and we find a lot of opal, well, then it was worth it. If there's nothing there, well, then it was the dumbest move ever. We're trying to break into their tunnels. We know there was opal found here, so hopefully they've left us some. So we're going to um, work around the clock, I think, until that day comes. Good to go. Yeah, you're looking for changes in ground. You're, look, you're looking for stains. Quite often, it, the level will have a stain in it. Boy, that could be level coming up. Bolts and going everywhere. It's bloody getting good, eh? Yeah, that's what we're after. It's not as deep as I thought it was. That's the we're after, man. It is big time rusty. That's rusty. That's actually stained dirt from all the topsoil seeping down over the frickin' times. Millions of years ago, silica-rich water from an ancient inland sea drained into the earth, filling voids in the porous bedrock and hardening to form opal. Yeah, I've got to keep checking this, eh? Hey? We can't rip it without someone checking. Look at that. Look at the colour of the Yeah, no, it's good. This light's no good for looking at opal, but a little bit darker, get the black lights going, we'll be laughing. You can see it during the day, the opal in the cut, but, you know, we don't want to miss any of it, so hence why we'll do the nighttime dig. Put it into two sort of grades. This is the... This one is probably the best grade. It's, it's classic Cupidity yeah. white base, really, isn't it? But still got heaps of nice movement and the colours in it. Hello. Sana. How you going? How you going, mate? Good. What's going on? Sanan, um, he tours around, buys opal from the fields and then sells it around the world. He's hard but fair, so it works out all right. We don't mind selling to him. Yeah, so what do you got? We've got 10 ounces, and most of it is in the higher grade. The Blacklighters have a parcel of Cuba Pedi white opal with flashes of the entire colour spectrum. In the rough, there's 280 grams. How big of a stone is that one? Is that one of the bigger ones? Yeah, that's that'd be what I'd call the king stone. The scale against your hand's actually not bad. We want 15 grand for it. Like, seriously, mate, it's worth every cent. I need a bit of meat. I, I, know, I know you guys are working hard, but I, I need to make some on it too. I, I think seven and a half would be fair. That's... Oi. That's halfway, Sanan. Definitely not, Sanan. Sorry, mate. Even the big boss is on your case. I'll tell you what, mate. I'll wriggle a little bit, 13, which is two grand off our asking price. How's that sound? I want the parcel, all right? I'll go to 10. I, I still think 10's a bit low, mate. I really do. Can you go to 12? All right, look, I'll, I'll, I'll do 12 if, once you get a larger parcel, you ring me first to have a look at it, all right? We're happy with that, mate. No, we're happy. Your customers will love this stuff. They really will. It's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, Sonata. All right, mate, thanks. Good to see you again. See you, mate. Well, what about that then, eh? That was a bit of a win. Yes, that was a bit of a win. That was all right. It's beautiful stuff. I'm really happy with that. Nice, nice bit of opal sold and um, Good to have some money back. a little bit more money back in the kitty because it was a little bit of a scary week. It's very good. No, very happy. Awesome. Can we put up a, um, a support and I'll just get in there and get that get out? No, nah, no. Nah. 
Isaac and Sophia just checked with me. The, they saw a few cracks in the, in the ceiling. I just they, they wanted to make sure it was safe. And um, yeah, well, it's simply not. That could come down in 10 seconds while I'm here talking or, or in 10 years. It's not worth your life. Come upstairs. I've got another idea, something you'll want to show you. We'll give that a go. Yeah, what this is, is uh, basically like a trommel, but it mounts to the front of that excavator. You, you scoop the dirt in here, yep. spin her around, get all the all the loose mullock from the really old mines, and then we're going to take it back home, wash it through, and pull out all the good stuff. Using Yui and Ricardo's opal trommel, the team will sift through mounds of dirt left behind from old-timers' mining activity known as mullock heaps that may contain opal. The excavator and the trommel together, and that was about 95 grand. 95 grand? So it needs to pay for itself. You know, if we're looking for opal through um, through mullock heaps, and we've got dust like that in our eyes, we're not going to be able to well, see anything. Well, we're obviously going to stand downwind of the dust and, <laughs> and try it's to... It's literally blowing me away. Breathe it in. <laughs> this wind is ridiculous. There's no, there's no doubt about that. But, um... Some people have made their fortunes in these old mullock heaps. Even with the windstorm and the dust and everything going on, there's absolutely no option to give up. We have to find Opal. Whoa, watch the dust, watch the dust. Oh, my eyes. The wind's really picking up now. I don't know how long we're going to be able to do this. I mean, I can hardly even see. What's this? Ah, oh, ah. Oh. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I got a heap of dust in my eyes. First aid kit, water. Yep. Can you just pour it, pour it into my eyes, man? Do you want to do it? Just really gently. Yeah. Come on, blink, blink. Yep. Other one, other one. Yep. I, I, I don't know, guys. I mean, it's, it's, it's a bit too too dusty and windy for this. As much as I want to keep going, yeah. I, I, I don't think we can in, in, in this dust. We might have to, to wait till the wind dies off. Yeah. So we can Ugh. we can actually see what we're doing without getting a, a face full of dirt, you know? Yeah, OK, buddy. Yeah, righto. All right, you guys happy with that? Yeah. No, it's no good, eh? All right. All right. It's. It's, it doesn't want to go. Yeah, so this coal is meant to slide upwards when it's going on. OK. After 70-kilometre winds shut down work, Opal Whisperers Sophia and Isaac are desperate to use Yui and Ricardo's new $95,000 excavator and trommel to sift through old mine dirt. Uh, so this hose is for running the trommel, but as far as I'm seeing, these fittings are just completely the wrong size. So... Unfortunately, we've had some bad luck. This is the first time connecting the hoses to, to the trouble. And then the key element of it is the hoses that make it spin, and they're the wrong size fittings. And out here, we can't just go to the shop and get new fittings. The closest place, that's 800 kilometres away. Well, that's that. We, we, we can't use... Uh, use the trommel. We do have a plan B. We'll just use a normal bucket. We'll load up some mullock dirt, and then we'll just wash it at home with, with the hose, and we should still find plenty. What a waste of time. That's opal mining. So like machinery breaks down. Maintenance, it needs to be done. It's just like part of it, isn't it? I just want to get started. I'm going to follow your advice, and I'm going to be positive for us, and let's, let's give it one more crack. Come on. Yeah. Right? Yeah. OK, let's find out. So the plan here is they're scooping up sections of the of the mullock heap, and then once we get it home, we'll wash it with the hose and uh, see what we got. This is how the old-timers used to do it. they just take home the whole opal level, wash it, get rid of all the clay, get rid of all the dust, and you're only left with, hopefully, opal. Uh, oh, oh where'd you go? Oh, oh, I got colour. I got red and green and blue, just a tiny bit of it. Colour, colour, colour. There is yeah. too. Is there? That's really nice. Look. Tell me. That's what we want to find. <laughs> That's what we're here for. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's lovely. 
Here's a look. look at that. Do you reckon that's, that's colour? That's really nice. Is that good colour? That's good colour. That's actually quite an indication. There's got to be more of this in here. We're about halfway through, eh, do you reckon, guys? Hey. Yeah, yeah, we're getting there. We've, we've made some progress. This is a nut. Look, look at that. Oh, mate, that's... Yeah, look at that. This... Check that out. Well, that's I got a beautiful opal fingers. Out. I got opal fingers. Opal fingers. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh yeah. check that out. Oh! I've never seen colour like that. Oh. oh, Sophia, that's pipe open. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, mate, ringstone. Look at that. I close my eyes and I can still see the blue. It's that yeah. strong. That is incredible. I've yeah. never seen blue like that that's before. That's incredible. Hey. Come on. Hey. Hey. OK, guys, it would be nice to know if we're in the same ballpark. None of us have spoken about pricing. Isaac and Ricardo have cut yawa nuts and seam opal, featuring the full spectrum of colours, polished, rubbed and in the rough. There's a total of 940 grams. Let's get down to business. 400. 400. All right. Yeah. Especially It's still got a lot of problems. Yeah. Yeah, the kingstones are interesting. Two and a half. Two and a half. So yeah. The gypsum exploding from the yeah. centre has cracked. Uh, the I've other. seen that once before. Incredible. Yeah, with a lot of luck, it's that. Uh, okay. All right. Okay. All right. We're ready. We've got our figures. Mm -hmm. We've got ours as well. So we've uh, aimed at a conservative retail. Mm -hmm. um, the amount that we have is 13500 We do feel it has the potential to go to 15000 mm. The retail market is quite diverse. Yep. Well, uh, well, we came to 14900 We found $14,000 yep. worth of opal together. Yep. And it's sitting right here on this table. Right here I think on the that table. is a massive. And I'm, I'm just going to throw this out there. Hands in. Hands in. Hands in. Hands in. Hands in. Hey. Yeah, let's do it. That heap that we got the Malik from, I'd been wanting to go through that, you know, for 20 years. I think I held the faith for that, and uh, but it paid off in the end. It's worked out well. With I think Sophia, they weren't afraid of getting dirty. Whenever you're partnering up with somebody, it's always a bit dubious, you know what I mean? Partnerships don't always work. But these guys are all right. Between us, we've cut some stones and we've got some rough opal. And we've found $14,000. 70% to them. 30 to us, very happy with 30%. Gentlemen, it's a nice, um, it's a nice yeah. team effort together. Yeah. Pleasure yeah. to work with yeah. you all. Pleasure to work with good you, work. Sophia. Good work, yeah, 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 good work. Jesus, man, there's colour everywhere. Woo! Two seasons ago, siblings Sophia and Isaac, the Opal Whisperers, were part of a team that discovered the biggest haul in Outback Opal Hunters history. We've got $1.2 million. Using their share of the profits, they bought their own claim, Yawa House. This season, the pressure's really on. The Opal provides us with the funds that we need to buy the machinery that we need to mine our own claim. We spent a lot of our money that we earned in the first season on our setup. We've got high hopes for this season. We've set our target at $150,000. Family legacy is um, one of the most important dynamic driving forces of this entire operation. Well, I'm just looking at the number of pieces that have just been finished. Magic, sheer magic. Our parents did this before us. We were brought up in Opal. They started in 1961 and we really want to do them proud. With their father living overseas for the past 15 years and their mother retired, Sophia Andreu now manages the jewellery shop set up by her parents. In our family store, I have the pleasure of dealing with some of the rarest gems in the world. But out of everything, there's nothing like opal. I started cutting at eight years old. I can literally read the formation to see what's inside it. There's everything riding on this season. If we don't find opal, we're going home empty-handed. It's, uh, it's about 40 feet to the bottom there. And, uh, I mean, it goes a lot deeper than that. Does it? It goes down to about 60 feet. Last year, we struggled a little bit. We only got half of our budget. This year, we um, need to find opal, then get, you know, equipment. I imagine buying an excavator. That'd be a massive win this year. Sophia and Isaac are working for a 30% share on a family friend's mine. After their own claim, Yawa House was flooded. 
We're thinking constantly about the Yawa House claim, so there we're really on 100%. Here we're on 30%, and basically we need to quickly find Opal to continue to find Opal in our own claim. Yui and son Ricardo's multi-million dollar claim passed down to them from Yui's father is 10,000 square metres and nearly 20 metres deep. Underground, there is a tangled maze of tunnels. This is a yawa nut here. It's a clay nut, so the centre of it's just white clay. Yawa nuts like this are a phenomena. They don't really know what they were. Unique to this region, the yawa nut is a hard shell of ironstone, often filled with clay. On rare occasions, silica-rich water has filled cracks in the ironstone, hardening and forming opal in intricate patterns. I can see a little bit of tiny, tiny bit of green in the bottom there, so I'll, I'll have a bit of a go. And lots of these little clay, clay-filled nuts, um, but no colour, no dice yet. I got this nut out here. Uh, there's a little bit of an indication of colour on it, but it's there. Oh, oh, look at that! Oh wow! Look at that! Wow. Isaac, they Check. found colour. Check that out. Oh, wow. Love it. And there's two halves of it. Cardo found colour, which is really exciting. So I'm going to drop this bit of a uh, bit of roof down so it's safe for everyone of mine. And then we'll get into the digging and hopefully find some more of what Ricardo pulled out. That looks better. That's much better. These are all the, uh, the little yawa nuts that came down from the overhang. And we're just furiously going through them because any one of them could be um, filled with colour. That's what you want. Oh, here we uh, go. see what that did. Nah. Uh, where are we? Guess what? Colour? Colour? Colour. We got a bit of green. Really? A bit of green. Electric uh, green? Yeah, yeah, quite bright. Just in the in the edge there. Right. We'll saw that one up at home. Well, that's a nut there. There's oh, another yeah, one. look at that. That's a decent size, too. Yeah, yeah that's, that's nice. nice size, eh? Yeah, yeah, we'll cut them up at home. Oh, wow. That's colour. Colour. You got colour? Yeah, wow, wow. Yeah. Have you got colour? Yeah, check really? it out. Yeah. Oh, wow, Ooh, That's cool. a nice green colour. We won't really know what it's worth or how big of a face the opal will cut until we get it to the machines. The yawa nut will show its true face, and that's what I want to see. 50 years later, a metre from the angel, and... Uh, yeah, and you're still finding opal. Yeah, a very, very nice opal at that. Yeah. That's beautiful. This is the first real test of how that partnership's going to go. If we're not happy with what he's cut, and if he hasn't gotten to at least 15,000, then I think we're going to have to re rethink this partnership altogether. All right, so out of the little blue bucket, I cut these six stones. Yeah, that's very nice. And a bit of rough here that I'm still looking at. Mm -hmm. And I even collected the chips to make sure yeah. you've got every piece. To prove their worth and secure a mining partnership with Yui and Ricardo, Isaac has cut and polished six Yawa nuts predominantly blue-green and with flashes of red, and partially worked 20 grams of large opal chips. Well, what do you reckon, Dad? Well, uh, three, five, maybe six. OK. And how much for this one, Dad? 700. OK. This one about 400. Uh, this one about 500. So what value did we come to? Uh, we have 10,600 altogether. That's a bit less than what we imagined. Look, all I can say, you can't get blood out of a stone. Uh, but actually, you guys didn't put anything on for the rough bits that are uh, left over this. No, that's right, that's of course. Right. There's amazing colour in that yeah. stone. It could be anywhere between 3,000 and 5,000. So we'll say in the middle to be, say, 4,000? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, look, look at this. Stuff. There's a little chip here as well. That's oh, beautiful. That's, yeah. that's, that's nice. That'll produce yeah. a nice stone. That is very nice. For this little chip, that could easily cut a $500 stone. Yep. Mm -hmm. OK, so with that considered a $50 jar, 300 bucks worth of chips. 
So, all together? 15,150. You're kidding. I'm serious. Yes. There you go. The good news is... Guys, we're in business. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Hands in, hands in, yeah. guys. Yeah. 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 We managed to just get over 15,000. I'm very, very happy with Isaac's cutting. I think moving forward, the partnership's going to work, and I hope we find some better stuff. I was nervous for a minute there. I'm just really glad that we've proven ourselves and we've got new partners with brilliant ground. Right. Do they? Hey, it's be good to go, eh? Oh, we should be right, man. It's exciting, eh? We've been waiting a while for this. Yeah, bloody oath, eh? Yeah, this whole year we've been working on this drill to get in the field. Today's the day we get it out there and start looking for a brand new field. Well, your boys don't worry about firing up, eh? Hey? Look at this. Really? Oh, right, eh? Hey? Rod's not finished. You're kidding me. Oh, what? He's only got that far. He got to here. He got another six feet. Oh, no. F me. Well, that's not good for us. Oh, man. We put a lot of effort in there. The last thing that was left was the hard facing, so we've left it with our mate Ben. But unfortunately, he's had to take off out of town. The hard facing process is critical to the longevity of the drill. A layer of hardened steel is applied to the drill's edge, minimizing wear and helping penetrate harder levels of rock and stone. You've got everything riding on this drill, man. We have to get this done. Yeah. We've got investors We're going We're supposed to be doing checks today and getting it out there, They're already starting. Like... Are you going to be able to do this yourself? Yeah, the stuff, the stuff should be here to do it. I can weld it. Yeah, our run cost for open mining has doubled in the past couple of years. We've had to put a, all our money this season so far into this drill and this auger. I think we really need an investor. Man, we can't. Can we work in this? With one mine flooded and another too dangerous to work... The cracks here look like they're opening up a bit. The Mooka boys, Matt Cathigan, brother Cosa and team leader Leif Tanza were forced to hunt for new opal-bearing ground. Hey, Cozzy! Hey? We're going this f***ing fair. Yes! <laughs> blobby country! Woo! Yeah, the big blobby matrix we pulled out of German gully. It was a nice, big 16-ounce uh, blob. It had a full colour all the way through it. Treated up real nice, too. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Look at that. That's beautiful. Now, they're doubling down with a bold move and have spent their entire earnings, over $25,000, fixing Leif's late father's 30-year-old exploration drill. Yeah, at the end of the day, like, you know, you're here to find opal, and the, the drill's the most efficient, quickest way to put you on you know, opal ground. Yeah, we had a fair bit of welding work to be done on the drill, and we really need to get it out because we've got some investors coming and we really want to put some drill holes down and show that we're, we're going to be a, a team worth investing in. Well, being an investor means, you know, it's like everything that comes down to these days. You, know, you, need, you need the money to be consistent. If you haven't got the money, like, you know, you, you can only do so much. There hasn't been a drill here in Anamooka for a long time, so us getting the drill out, it opens up a lot more. We can uh, hit some of these hills that haven't got many diggings on them and find out why they haven't. We believe that there's still opal under them, so... Yeah, the drill's going to show us that, and uh, hopefully we can have some new cuts out and some new fields. We're done. That's yeah. it. <laughs> ah, you beauty. Oh, we're trying to get it out in the field. Yeah. German Gully's a place we keep coming back to. We're out here today to have another crack at that. And this is the first time we bought the drill here, so hopefully we'll, we'll go down and we'll, we'll find that spot we're looking for. Here it goes, breaking it! Woo! We've been waiting for this moment for years. We've put a lot of effort, all our money in this year. It feels great to be able to see that drill turning and, and screwing itself into the ground, that's for sure. Life's dad got it a fair while ago. He uh, had to do some work on it and that, but um, yeah, since he's passed away, we've, we've done the work on it and now we're getting it out there. Well, I thought when I was coming up here, we were going to be mining. Yeah, we are. Drilling. Yeah, drilling is mining. Ah. In Andamooka, Leif, Matt and Cosa are struggling to convince Tom Sully Sullivan that their drilling program is worth investing in. This is the most efficient way, man, to prospect for opal. We might just be able to drill up enough prospects to last us for a couple of years, man. Oh, show us how it works. 
Well, we'll set him up on the next hole. Where's your next hole? They seem to be quite unorganised, but, you know, at least they're out there turning the dirt. And, um, yeah, hopefully we can find some opal, I guess. Yeah. Here's what it is. I can understand, like, you know, you sink, sink some money into sort of any sort of project or shit like that. You want to see results, but he likes to be a bit of an argument sometimes. So when are we going to see Opal? Look, at the end of, end of the day, man, I've been, I've been doing this all my life. There's a way I like to do things. Um, I'm more than happy to take on other people's opinions if I know they know what they're talking about. But I mean, you can't, in the, you know, guns blazing and expecting to see results straight away, like, but you know, there's a process to it. Yeah, we got uh, Tom out here having a look at our show here. And he is a pretty aggressive businessman, so he's really putting us on the line, um, pressing us down. This is the hardest part about open mining, is there's all these promises and the, the chance to make millions, and it never happens. Doesn't look like we've got anything. Oh, hey, hey! What's up, man? We got color, man. There, he hit some stuff. Oh, yeah, another bit. Yeah, another bit. We got some colour, man. Got his colour? Yeah. Oh, look at that. It's noble, man. That's awesome. We'll have to pull the auger out and see what's jammed up in the auger now. Yeah. That's pretty. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. There we go. Hey, hey, here we are. So that's the piece of opal that we smashed through. Look at that, man. It's definitely decent sized material down there, boys. Oh, a nice colour bar on that one. Oh, yeah, nice. Nice. That's awesome. Look at that. Yeah, we're talking. Oh, that's gorgeous. That must have been in the wall, eh, hey, to chip it off like that. So, uh, what's it going to cost to keep going for this drill program? Look, all things going well, you know, probably only need, I don't know, 500, 1,000 a week to keep this rolling. 500, 1,000? Yeah. You probably average around 50 holes a week, like, and that's including, you know, if, you, if we get into deep ground as well. Can you guarantee that? Yeah. I have your word? Yeah. Yeah, we're putting effort in, that's for sure. All right, I'm in. <laughs> yeah. Good. Beauty, man. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming out, mate. Thanks for giving me something to return home with. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. We're going to continue on with this drilling process, and then from there we'll work out where we're going to obviously start digging. And then hopefully we'll be able to start turning a decent profit. The Mooka Boys drilled up Jelly Opal, named for its gelatinous appearance. Its estimated worth is only $250, but it secured the team a $1,000 a week investment to continue drilling. Tom will take a percentage of profits once a mine is established. It's been a long time coming, and uh, now that we've pulled our first little investor, we're going to be able to keep on drilling all year. Whole new era of mining for us. Look at those, boys. We're out in the uh, German gully shallows in Anamooka. There's a lot of opal come out of this field over the years, and they call this blobby country. So you can get some big blobs of opal and matrix all stuck together. So that's that's hopefully what we're here for. The Mooka boys, Matt Cathigan, brother Cosa, and team leader Leif Tanza are on the hunt for a new opal claim in freezing desert temperatures just outside the town of Andamooka. About this time of year, it always gets a bit blowy and a bit windy, you know, you know, but, yeah, you put up with it. There's a lot of claims pegged nearby here at German Gully. It's very shallow ground, so you don't have to do much work to get there. So hopefully we can find our own little spot here. What have you got? It's neither wash, but there's colour in it, eh? Oh, I can see the colour from here. Yeah, there's little wings of colour. It's a little bit different. Hmm. So what do you reckon? This is going to be our spot around here? I think so, then. Yeah, we'll come back in the morning with a dozer and some pegs, eh? Yep. Oh, can you? Man, I got no light, man. <laughs> yeah, everything seems to be all right in here. Switch feels dodgy, ain't my switch just died, man. Eh? Oh, I'll hold the light out the window and we'll see if we can get moving with that, eh? Yeah, all right. Bloody hell, man. It's a long way home in the dark. We've got a lot of very deep tunnels and cuts really close to the roads around here, so it's really easy to fall in something uh, deeper than my car. Is this the right road? Where'd you go? Oh, I don't know, man. Yeah, Cozzy, lie that like front oh. there. I can't see. Well, I'm trying to look where we're going. I can barely see. All the rocks look the bloody same, man. It's all right, stay on the road. Yeah, that's the road there. Turn around. 
trucks go everywhere area. Since then, I can see the lights of the houses up there. Yeah, we're coming into town now. Well, we made it, boys. Hey, beauty. Thank God for that. The cracks here look like they're opening up a bit. Yeah, that looks like it's opening up a bit here as well, bravo. Last week, the Mooka boys had to abandon Leif's late father's claim after it proved too dangerous to mine. Those tunnels were bad when Dad was around. It was something we knew years ago, and bloody, it was a bit of a gamble going back there. Three years ago, Leif's father, Paul, was caught off guard during a disagreement and later died from his injuries. Using information from the Opal Bible Paul wrote, the Mooka boys have turned their attention to German Gully. German Gully was one of the old family spots we worked at. Quite successful there, had some really good finds. We're going for a pretty high target this year. We really want to get to $150,000. Well, the whole goal of this was to continue on with Dad's work. We don't want to be millionaires, we just want to be comfortable. Our ultimate goal is to be able to enjoy ourselves and support our families with what we're doing. Trying to support the family on an open-minded wage is pretty hard because you, you never know when the money's coming. We're getting real desperate. If we don't find any more, then this season's going to be over fast. Lobbies form when opal fills an unusually large void. The biggest blobbies are up to 50 centimetres in diameter, but are very rare and can be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Oh, it was starting to find a bit of chunks with some opal trace in it. You can kind of see the little lines in there. Small lines of opal have been encapsulated in the rock around here, which is a really good sign for us, because we're looking for big matrix and we're looking for big seams. So it's only trace, but it tells us at least there's opal here, so we've got a chance. We just got to hope we can find that bigger piece. We're not uh, looking too well if we don't find any opal out of here. We've uh, used a fair bit of diesel and uh, yeah, we, we need to make something out of this, otherwise, um, yeah, I don't know what we'll be doing. Hey, Cozy! <laughs> get over here! Wow! I was just checking a level back there. We're going to this f***ing fair. Yes! <laughs> Love loving country! Woo! Holy crap! I just went to have a look at what the level might look like. Just took a bit out the wall and this big blobby fell out. I can't hear anything over here, fuck this still. Don't have to hear, bro. I'm just open your eyes. Look at it. <laughs> <sighs> I've come across a blobby, man. Sitting right there for us. That's some top quality Anamuga blobby matrix. That's what we're here for, boys. This is the biggest piece of opal I've found in a long time. That's beautiful, man. Yeah, you know, we've had a really rough start to the season. Everything wasn't working out for us so far, but finding a bit of colour like this really, really gives you hope. What we're doing here is a treatment by using some sugar and some acid to basically carbonise the pores inside of the host rock and it'll bring it out to uh, the colour much more vibrant. In Andamuka, brothers Matt and Koza are chemically treating a chip from their large blobby opal. What we do is we uh, want to give it a bit of a rinse to get the sugar off the outside of it. We're really hoping this host rock darkens in the matrix and really brings out that colour. We're going to need every dollar we can this season. We've got the sulfuric acid up to heat now, just below simmering. We'll give it a bit of time, see if we have the reaction. After adding the sulfuric acid, a chemical reaction begins with the sugar in the host rock. The acid converts the sugar's hydrogen and oxygen molecules into water, leaving the black carbon molecules embedded in the stone. You reckon, Cos, it's time for a look? Yeah, let's have a look. Uh, Hopefully it's got dark. Yeah, it's definitely reacted with the sugar, giving us that carbon we're looking for. A big moment. Have a little rinse down here. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Look at that. That's beautiful. Yeah, nice reds and blues and greens and yellows and oranges. Beautiful colours. I could not be happier with that. And uh, <laughs> this is only going to get better with more treatments too. So, uh, yeah, 
But we only thought half of it had colour and two we treated it, the whole lot. So glad you hit that rock yesterday, Matty. I know. See, you can sort of see the comparison once we treat it to the natural stone. It, uh, once you darken that host rock, that, that colour can really stand out. And this is a, a perfect example of that. I'm ecstatic, man. Yeah, we man. did so Excellent. good. <laughs> the treated chip off the opal blobby displays the full colour spectrum across the face. The combined weight of the treated and untreated opal is 453 grams. So, man, we uh, we got a bit of a test. Oh done. shit! Yeah. You beauty. Look at that. Oh, I can see this sort of stuff being 50, 60 dollars a carat when it's cut. Oh, easy. What do you reckon is a blob price? Well, look, 16 ounces gets us 2,480 carats. I think we should be asking at least 10 bucks a carat. That's going to net us $24,800. <laughs> Mate, that not is bad. not a bad week at all. <laughs> we needed it. Season's looking a lot more promising now. This week's turned out very good for us. I don't know how I'm going to go with. See what I can Just do your best. All right, right. We're pretty keen. It's our last hurrah in this mine. We're ready to rip it out and, you know, hopefully make a few dollars. Yeah, Buster. We're pushing towards the pillar, so we're just going to try to see what's in the middle, I think. This is our best dirt, but it being a big pillar and bearing a lot of weight, we've had to leave it to the last thing to do. Not in the business of um, getting myself killed. In Lightning Ridge, New South Wales, Chris Cheel, 20-year-old son Oscar and family friend 21-year-old Farron Lamb are starting the season with one of the most dangerous digs oh, yeah. they've ever undertaken. Obviously, we're starting to see stuff. All we want to do is dig, but we do have to be careful. They're removing the dirt from a huge opal-bearing pillar supporting their entire mine and close to crumbling old-timers' workings. It's all coming down to one pillar. Hopefully, we'll find a bit this week to keep us going for next show. Got too hungry. Yeah, well, that's all workings in there now. There's trace in there. I don't want to leave it there. Well, are you happy with the roof there, do you reckon? The roof's not too bad at the moment. But, like, I mean, obviously, the more we open it up, the more, the more it's going to stress. I don't know. Not the safest thing in the world. We just have to do it right. No good being the richest man in the cemetery. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Last season was a tough season for us. We're down now, we won't get a tail out this week. Plenty of breakdowns. Fueling. Plenty of wet weather. Yeah, look how black it is, you know. Right around, too. It's going to come in, there's no doubt about that. There was definitely times last year where I thought we'd have to um, pull the plug. There wouldn't even be $20 in that. You just got to cop it on the chin and get out of bed and keep going to work. It's as simple as that, but can't afford another season like that, you know. The Chiel's hometown. Lightning Ridge is one of the only places on Earth where rare black opal can be found. The most valuable in the world, worth up to $49,000 a gram. It's a beautiful stone and there's no two stones the same and I guess once it gets in your blood, it's hard to get out. There's no doubt about that. But the Chiel's disastrous last season means black opal stock for their new online business is critically low. Having the business up and running now, you know, pressure to find opal is through the roof, and I'm just hoping we can deliver. To add to the family's pressure, Chris's eldest son, Rory, is finishing an engineering degree and unable to mine, so Farron has stepped up. Farron's grown up with Rory and I. He considers us his second family, and we consider him a part of ours. It's the way it's always been and um, always will be. Yeah, hopefully we get some good opal and, like, really get that website out there. Like, you know, that's what we want. You snags. You know, I want to be successful. I'd like to see the boys make some dollars out of it. That to me is probably the most important thing. So, season target for us. We're looking at 200 grand this year. It'd be nice to get a bit more than that, but um, you know, there's no guarantees. Oh, all this colour there, so we're in with half a chance. And there is old workings through there. Some big areas. Like, we wouldn't really want to open up a whole lot more without putting props in. Yeah, we've kind of got a prop to the face. 
removing part of the super pillar near old workings could trigger a collapse. The chiels need to support thousands of tonnes of sandstone above them as they mine the pillar. I have before put in bridge props. Bridge props? It's a bigger surface area. Yeah. Like spread over and yeah, they're, they're pretty good. Like, I mean, they'll, they'll hold up a lot of ground. It's almost like putting a small pillar in, eh? Yeah. It's pretty solid. Yeah, very solid. Well, no, Fingers not. crossed. Righto. Righto. This is a perfect size. So anything around that is about what we want. A prop in open mining is essentially just a cut pine tree, and we use them underground to help um, hold the roof up. These are cypress pine. They just grow native out here. Cypress pine's really good. The termites don't touch them. It's just good solid timber, and it's readily available. It's just about to come down, but I'm out of fuel. Keep the dog out from under there, please. Hey, Buster. To fill the back of their 20-tonne truck, the Chiels need to hoist over 30 buckets of dirt from the opal-bearing pillar. The pressure's on. Um, all of us can feel it. We poured a lot into, you know, this whole operation, the business, everything. There's a lot of pressure from a lot of different angles for all of us, so we do need a, a big find, and we need it soon, hopefully. We can't go this year leaving off scraps like we did last year. Yeah, we're at the truck. Not quite a full load, but it's enough. We're going to run this up, put it in the agitator and wash it down, and um, hopefully we've been paid for the work we put in this week. One kilometre from their mine, the Chiels Agi, or Agitator, a modified cement mixer, uses thousands of litres of water to wash away sandstone and clay from the opal-bearing rocks. There's a lot riding on these tailouts now. We need them to produce so that we can actually get something, get it online, you know, that would be ideal. That's it. Didn't watch down the much. Didn't see much. Any luck up there, bro? Yeah. Nah. How you going? Good. Back from the cutter, eh? Mmm. How'd you go? I don't know whether I should show you or not. Was it good or bad or what? Come on, Chris, spit it out. Well, I'll give you a look. <laughs> you ready? Yeah, yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Holy shit. laughs> Far out. <laughs> That's a big one. Bro, look at that. I kind of deep down thought they might have cleaned up those sandy ones, but yeah. I didn't think they'd clean up that, that good. good. Good black oval, boys. <laughs> That's what we do, it, eh? <laughs> exactly. The Chiels have grey and black based opal. The polish exposing a sea of electric blues and greens with flashes of rare red, weighing an estimated 16 grams. How much you put on it? On your website, 60 grand. 60 grand? Hey! Hey, man! 60 Gs! Oh. So you got some stock for the website now, mate? Yeah, well, that's what we're after, eh? Jeez, season's off to a flyer. <laughs> when you get out of bed and you know, you're putting the hard work in, there's nothing better than actually seeing a few gems come your way. Even that blue one in the middle there with the green. Yeah, we had a fairly tough week, and we weren't sure how it was going to go. In the end, it was a good result. Cheers, boys. That's it. <laughs> Got me, Ty? Looks like we got us a convoy. What about you, Bandit? You on channel? Yeah, mate, I can hear you. Righto, Ty. Fire up, mate. Let's get down there. We got a long way to go and a short time to get there. We're gonna do what they say can't be done, mate. You silly old b You're getting worse. Shady Acres is on its way. I flicked the lever on the, the block here and it let go, it didn't catch. Dropped the rope right down the bottom, so I have to go down and get it. The Bushmen are working in muddy, slippery conditions as they prepare to empty their mine of waste dirt. 
See, if it wasn't wet, you wouldn't have slipped, would it, Les? That's right. Don't back him up. Oh, God. Uh, I knew this was going to happen. It's bloody Ben. What happened, mate? Too wet? Yeah, she's wet out there, mate. That truck's going to end up getting bogged. So you're not bogged now? I'm not bogged now. Ah, oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one good thing. Drilling's a dirty job as it is. You mix the rain into it and everything just turns to clay as it lands on you. It's not real pleasant. Oh, well, if you want, you stay and give us a hand, because yep, you know, we need yeah, all yeah. the help we can get. Yeah, no worries. Now, i just got to warn you, the old fella's very prickly, all right? So, <laughs> high alert. Right, uh, I don't even want to be here in this mud. You know, it's just wearing me thin, it is. Wearing me thin. What'd you do to it? We didn't do nothing. You don't like working in the mud. See, normally we don't work in this weather. Yeah, well, it's not exactly dry or safe here, is it? No, but then it's not normal times, you know? We've got to get down there, mate. How you going, Les? How are we going to suck this dirt up? It's just mud, mate. Well, mate, all we can do is try, Les. We got her. You beauty! Good work, Les. That's a good one. Good work. Half She's all that struggling around. At least we've got it down there. It's still a little bit how you're going, but the boys are just going to have to be extremely careful down there. It's going to be hard yakka. They've had a good go in here, mate, anyway. There's not enough room down there for more than two people. If we don't block the bloody thing up to start with, we'll, we'll have half a chance. Yeah, the blower's like a big vacuum cleaner. It sucks all the dirt up the blower pipe and then puts it into a big bowl. And when you back the engine revs off, all the dirt goes into the back of the truck. Hang on. And that's, that's hollow. Yeah, that's hollow. Just hit a bit of tin, it sounds a bit hollow underneath it. That like, could run down to another level that or something. That could go like. down to 60 foot, another mine underneath. Yeah. It goes deeper. I'm just going to get Rod down in. I'll get him on the radio. Better off be safe and sorry. I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, mate, I'm on my way. While removing waste dirt in preparation to work their new claim, the Bushmen have discovered an old corrugated tin sheet that could be the entrance to an unstable sub-level mine. That sound hollow under there, eh? Yeah, it could just be the tin, but... Right. If the guys that were mining this had a super hoist, there's a sump that goes in the floor for about two to three metres. A sump hole allows the top of the super hoist's longer bucket to sit at floor level, making it easier to load. That it's possible that we've got three metres of shaft underneath us. It's definitely a sump and it's filled in, so it's not dangerous. It'll be all right. All right, eh? All right. Right, you're doing a fantastic job. Right, eh? We'll keep going. Do it. Right, It could be worse, Les. Could be us down there shifting all that dirt. It's about time we took it a little bit easy, mate. Well, that's it. Coming into rain again. There's enough bloody slop around here, you know. Have a look out here. It's, yeah. yeah. Not much I can do about the weather, Les. I'm sick of working in the rain and wet puddles of mud and shit like that. Well, they're almost finished, Les, so... I'm going home. I'm getting wet too. Getting wet? Nah. It's starting to rain again. The wind is cold. The old fella's got the He's not happy at all. The Bushmen are at odds, working through severe wet weather conditions, racing to clear waste dirt from their new claim to finally begin mining. Look well, that bloody thing. <laughs> that looks real good, mate, eh? Look at that. That's a humdinger, isn't it? That's a cracking little stone, mate. Yeah. After Wait. moving 35 ton, we found, <laughs> we found something. <laughs> Makes it all worth it. You little ripper! <laughs> <laughs> Go and show the big fella. 
I don't know, they want me to bring the winch up. Don't know why. And now we wait time. I'd like to see a look on its head. <laughs> oh, boys! Hey, where'd you get this from? I picked that up off the dirt, mate, on the floor. Mate, that's bloody beautiful. Colour goes all the way around. They found it in that dirt. We've been sucking out. The Bushmen have a single piece of Grawan Seam Opal. Iridescent blue-green on a dark grey base, it's in the rough and weighs 8 grams. There, Les. Hey, Les, where are you? Yeah, what's up? Where are you? Oh, I'm sitting on the on the long drop. Oh, uh, he's down on the crapper. I did see the wet blankets on the line. What's he got now? Every time it rains, he puts blankets on the lines. He sprinkles some washing powder on them, and that's how he washes his blankets. <laughs> Here he comes. What's happening? Have a crack at this, mate. <sighs> oh, gee, that's not a bad bit of stone. It's a ripper, but look of it. What do you reckon, Les? A few bob there, mate. Maybe three grand. Put a bit of diesel in the tanks anyway, mate. Oh, that mate. will for a while, yeah. Yeah, you feeling warmer now? We need you underground to do the digger. Yeah, as long as it's not raining too heavy. Yeah, I suppose I could bend the rules a little bit. Good on you, mate. All right, it's all go to for tomorrow, eh? Too easy, mate.